also, when you're looking at other people's blessings, right, you're not willing to take on their lessons mm. either. So you could say, oh, Skittles, yeah, I want a Tesla, but you weren't willing to sleep on an airbed for six months mm. to grow your company again. You could say, oh, I want a Maybach, but you're not willing for two years straight not to pay yourself and to pay every single person around you, mm. right? For You're not willing to go through the struggles that I went through to get the things that I have. So don't say, oh, you should have a Honda, because if I had a Honda, you wouldn't believe that I did everything that I did with the business that I currently have. If I pulled up in a Honda right now, y'all be like, oh, she don't own no, she don't got no multi-million dollars. Because that's just the way that our culture is set up. People have to see. And I want to feel it. When I get in my Maybach, I want to feel like, wow, all those tears in my Honda Tucson led to this. Right. I want to feel packing up my car, leaving Cleveland, Ohio and packing up my car in my Honda Tucson with the the, um, driver, the rear view, the passenger back door not working, packing that car up and moving to Atlanta. Here I am 10 years later and look what I've done. So it's not about me flaunting my materialistic things. It's about one, me living a life that I'm actually proud of Mm. and allowing other women to see it through my work, Mm. not through my through my gifts not y'all don't even see half the stuff mm. like i always tell people scroll back me and zoe been together 10 years our first trip was dubai dubai wasn't even popular then right we just were saving up figuring it out making sure that we did things for each other so don't ever compare somebody's first day for their to their hundredth fuck, day fuck. right mm. don't ever compare your bank account to somebody else's bank account you know what i'm saying that's, that's and don't ever though. compare my lifestyle to your budget Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Come so on. what do you do outside of podcasting? Nothing. Nothing? Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, because most people do something. Like what? Like real estate. Oh, no, I ain't getting that. I ain't get that. Something. No, I ain't get that money yet. Mm. I mean, if you wanna, I mean, 16 mil is a lot. You can invest in it. I can, I can get some real estate. Then we call it, you know what I'm saying? Is that what you want to do? The, no, the podcast should be making money right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, the podcast is going cool. Okay. But well, no, the no, fuck is on the podcast? No, I, I, I ain't getting to none yet. I, okay. I want to do real estate. You feel me? It's just like, you know, you got to put your stuff got to be in order. For yeah, 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 for you sure. Know, once this shit really go crazy and mm. really start making funds, then I can start investing in everything else. Right now, I'm really just like 100% investing in this. Yeah. So, like. I think it's dope. I love the setup. And oh, I appreciate it. You How watch you? Some videos? I, wa- I don't. I watch one. I watch one or two. Uh, I watch the one with J- Jayla Corian. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I watch the DJ drama one. Oh, sheesh. Okay. I mean, that's cool. Yeah. That's all good. So, what you want to talk about? Whatever. Like, whatever? Not, I mean, whatever. Whatever. Mm. All right, let's get it started, man. <laughs> Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, J. Hill, J- Mr. J. Hill Podcast. We in the building. Miss Skittles in the building. Yes. Like, um, you, is, like, how you feeling, first of all? I'm feeling amazing. Mm. I, God has got me in a really good space right now, so I'm feeling good. Why, why you got you in a really good space? I mean, you know, like, in, in entrepreneurship, there's going to be different levels, and I feel like, Last year, um, at the end of the year, I wasn't really clear on what my next level was. Like, I think in business, especially when you've been in business so long, I started in business very young, and you go through so much, it's kind of like, all right, am I ready to just chill, or am I ready to turn it up a notch? And so, I think God, like, constantly reminds me that, like, it's time to turn it up, so. Was it, was everything, was it, like, just feeling like... It was on coast and like everything you wanted, you was getting and like you ain't really had to do nothing. So you wasn't as motivated or was it really hard and it looked different for you. So it kind of got scary. So 
um, last year I was in a place of scaling my team. Mm -hmm. So I have multiple businesses, right? So I got to the height of my staff, which was like 42 employees. Mm -hmm. And that almost took me out. Just, you know, and, and also I feel like when you started entrepreneurship, you don't really know the leader that you have the capacity to be. Right. And so you lead in a bunch of people, yeah. right? So I have 42 people asking me, oh, what? Where, where this go? Where this go? How to do this? How to do like 40? You can barely have two people asking you that and you ready to go crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine 42 people needing me and needing my answers and needing my thought processes. It was just a lot. So I kind of went through November, December. I kind of was burnt out. I'm like, I just need people around me that think like if you I don't care about your talent. I don't care about your skill. If you just use your brain, you're hired. Just use like, your ingenuity and just like make it happen. Like it's been, I understand. Yeah. Like, even like in this field, like I don't know, we'll record. I might have like a tag sticking out. And it's like, bro, like I get you my videographer <laughs> or photographer. But if I have something, we people just say, bro, fix your shirt. Like that ain't my job. Like what the? Yeah, so yeah. I get it. I get it. So, so that caused me to be burned out. Also, um, as a small business, when you start paying a bunch of people, mm. and it's still, we're, I'm still a small business at the end of the day. I don't have no investors, no backing, no funding. So I'm still a small business. So when you paying people, and you know that they are not. You know they don't got your back. Mm -hmm. You know they like you know just waiting. Like okay, I'm just sitting around waiting till she come up, or I'm waiting till this um, company be successful. Then I'm gonna ride that wave. Like it really tugs at your heartstrings because you really don't know. Like when you get to a certain level of success, you really don't know who's got your back and who's stabbing you in your back. Mm -hmm. Like it becomes really, you start looking at everybody, like especially when somebody that you really, really rode for betrays you, mm. you start being like, okay, well, who's next? Who's next? So I think November and December, I was just in that mode. And then like, you know, I took a trip. I heard from God and God was like, no, nah, you're good. Like mm. this is what you're meant to be doing. So yeah, let's talk about betrayal and, um, and those, those heights of your career. Yeah. You know I mean, I feel like a lot of times people see success and they feel like you just, unstoppable you like can't nothing happen to you right it's like all your your family members is like are you good you ain't got much to worry about you making all this money you doing all this it's like bro like are you crazy like, yes. are you like how does that how does that even look um someone on your level like you know as successful as you are being betrayed like what yeah what, what's the, some things that penetrate your heart and hurt your feelings I think the thing about me is I'm such a genuine person. That's what I always question God about is I'm like, God, show me like why you set me up to be the most genuine person. Like mm. why you set me up to have a heart of gold and always pouring into people, always checking on people like anybody that's around me, like my old staff, old people that I work with. They know like I will give the shirt off my back, the wig off my head to make sure you're good. Like even if I'm not good mm. and most people at, in my area or my zone of genius they don't even like we would never even tell nobody we weren't good mm. you know what i'm saying so like the people it gets to a point where everybody around you kind of needs something from you so you start to build up a wall to say well dang if everybody need me how can i go to them about what i need mm. so when that betrayal come for you know the person that's went <laughs> like bro like went above and beyond like sleepless nights and in my industry like I've had a marketing agency for seven years so my sleepless nights don't even be about me it be about my clients it be about the people I'm trying to help it be about me seeing where they started and wanting them to grow and wanting them to be in a certain level wanting them to have a certain amount of money wanting me to see them taking care of their families putting their mm -hmm. families on so when that betrayal come it Honestly, it makes you question everybody else. And it mm. makes you think like, dang, if this person rock with me, they said, I rock with you. I do this. I'm that. I, I got your back. We in it to win it. We, we you know, we learn from this, like all that. And then they betray you. It kind of just be like, all right, cool. But I also feel like if you harden your heart and stop being that same person that gave and gave and gave, like, God will take your blessings away because he put you on this earth to do. He put you on this earth with this type of heart for a reason. Mm. And sometimes I don't know, like I'm talking about last year I had. So I, I just, I just had things like falling apart with people that I felt like I gave my all to. Mm. And I'm just like, okay. Well, you know, it's funny. Like is, I don't want to say it's the industry because that's such a vague response. 
but especially the the entertainment industry, especially like just the the industry when it comes to like we got each other back, right? Yeah. You do something for me, I do something for you. Um, and that industry, it's it, it feel like I don't know, man. I, I say this a lot. Like people just be weird. You feel me? Like it's like you really don't see it until you see it, and in the moment <laughs> you see it, it's like it's too late for us. Like, yeah. damn, I, I always knew you was weird, but it's like, damn. I didn't know you were that weird. <laughs> yeah, but not even just a person in particular, but like just situation. Like you never thought, especially like when you grinding from the bottom to the top, right? We grinding and we getting it out the dirt. And it's like, bro, like it really be the person that you least expected from. Seriously. And I, but I feel like for me, it's like every lesson, there's a blessing. No, for sure. Like for every single lesson that I've ever went through, even when I lost my company, ended up on an airbed, I was like, Yo, like, these are people that signed me and was like, you're talented. Oh, my God, your business. We're going to take it to the top. We're going to make this a $30 million company. Like, Juicy Couture, like, looking me in my face, looking me in my husband, then boyfriend, at the time, looking us in our face like, oh, you're going to make it, to six months later, fire me from my own company. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, I'm shook. Like, y'all put up this big facade about how I was so talented, how I was this, how I was that, how I would get everything I wanted. I signed the paper and everything went out the door. Mm. But like at the end of the day, that lesson with me partnering and signing with investors and losing my company ended up being my biggest blessing. Mm. I then started a marketing agency. I didn't even know that I was really good at marketing. I just... I didn't even know marketing was a thing. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, I knew that I put people on. I know that I know how to get in a room, connect you with this person, then y'all win together. But I didn't know that it was like marketing. marketing. I didn't know it was yeah. a skill, yeah. right? Yeah, so once I started my marketing agency, the company that actually was the reason kind of why I got fired from my, my original company, um, they came back to me and was like, we want to hire you to be a consultant. I was like, what? Here we go. You know, years later, my company makes $16 million. Mm. So that lesson that I, oh, I had a $4 million clothing company. Oh, I'm lit. I'm good. Like, I'm popping off. My family's taken care of. God knew that I needed to go through that to, to be able to experience what a $16 million company mm. felt like. So when I go through stuff, I just be like, all right, God, I see you working. What, what's next? Like, mm. it, it it's kind of like. I feel like when you go through betrayal, when you go through doubt, when you go through insecurities, it's like training camp. It like it's preparing you for a championship. Like my favorite quote, and I had to um, take this in with myself because in the beginning stages of entrepreneurship, and I don't know if you experience this, but when you get like your first three people, you like, we gonna make it to the top together. Mm -hmm. Like I got your bag, you got, and then like- They leave. They leave. You gotta find another one. You another like, person. yo. Then I, I started to get bitter inside. Like, what? You did this? I, I let you sleep on my couch. I bought you your first car. Like, what you mean you leaving? So I had to create a, a I had to develop something inside of me that literally said, God put us on, on this earth to win. Mm. It don't mean you got to win on my team. Mm. So whether you win on my team or not, you're going to win in whatever else you're doing. So I can't be mad that you go switch teams because, like, when you look at LeBron, he started with the Cavs. I'm from Cleveland, of course. So he started with the Cavs. They were losing. He was a star player, though, but the team was losing as a whole. He had to switch teams to go and get a ring. Mm. He had to switch teams to win, to win at the end of the day. So God put us on this earth to win. It just means you got to switch a couple of team members around to find that winning team. I mean, that's, I'm happy that you got that, like, inspirational thought process because me, I'm a little bitter. Like, you switched my team, f*** you. Really? Like, so, yeah. like, so I think, like, even what you're saying, right, I think for me, I take it personal, and mm. I say this all the time, but, like, I can take something personal and not exude that in my everyday life, right, if that, that makes sense. Like, you like my husband. I can't do that. Yeah, so I can, like, me, I take it personal. I let it motivate me. I feel like, but I think even with you losing the uh, the gig from that the, million, the $4 million company, yeah. right? I feel like it had to be something in you to take it personal to be able to bounce back because a lot of people they take it to heart and it hurt their feelings they can't bounce back. Me, I take it personal when now it's like you you don't be don't be a part of my motivation. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like don't be a part of my motivation because now, but I ain't gonna I'm not gonna hate you. Yeah. Like, like company I got I got fired from like radio right. Mm. I love the company like I like I was a, putting the company on the map. Wow. They got rid of me and it's like cool now all this is is the motive is to let you know that yeah you dumb as. Yeah, you yeah. Stupid. yeah, that's how I feel. Like, but it ain't no love lost, no yeah. harm done for real. But it really motivated me. Though. Yeah, like, that's why I was I'm wondering. Like, did that that had to motivate you in some type of way? Absolutely. I think for me, um, I dealt with a 
part of, and I think this is most entrepreneurs that start a business and it's going and it's growing and it's doing well, and then it fails or it mm-hmm. doesn't work out, right? I think that's the part of it where you start to think like, is it me? Like, dang, what did I do? I did something wrong. I failed. I'm the reason why this company, I made the wrong decision. So for me, I internalized it mm. first. And I started to be insecure okay. with my own um, with my own thought process when it came to entrepreneurship. So the first thing I had to get through is get through that. Like, mm. nah, like people fail all the time. Yours is just a little bit more public, right? Mm. So once I got through that and realized like, and and I didn't get through it. I called my friend and was like, hey, I lost my company. I have four individuals that are working in my retail store and I need to pay them. Can you look over my resume? I'm about to apply at Best Buy. Mm -hmm. It's the highest paying job and it's right down the street. She was like, girl, if you build one million dollar company, build another one. Mm -hmm. And that motivation now made me like, you know what? It's money in my emails. It's money in my Instagram. It's money all around me. Let me just start reaching out to people, being vulnerable to let them know, hey, I'm going through this thing right now, but that don't, that don't mean count me out. I still have these gifts. I still have these talents. Mm-hmm. And once I did that, that's when they started to bring me on, hire me, told me to start a consulting company, and I got my first six-figure client. Yo, how long did it take you to from when you got fired, right, to get back on your feet? Was it a long time? No. So I was with that company for six months. Mm -hmm. I got fired in November and I was on an air bed for six months. Mm. And I literally made it in my mind. I said in in April, I think that's the right time, April, October, April, whatever. But in April, when I my lease was up in my New York apartment and I was Airbnb in it, um, I said, in April, I have to have a plan on how I'm going to get my brand back. I just spent so much bread with all my lawyers. You know, I've done all these things. I opened up another store. I try to, you know, get them upset like it ain't working. So I need to devise a plan. So I devised a plan, sent them an email and was like, yo, this has to work. And they were like, oh. Okay. Mm. And so I came back to them six months later, ended up buying my company back. But six months of, when I tell you six months of tears, six months of, of, of heartbreak, six months of insecure, you know, being insecure with myself, it was six months, six months of grind. I was going to ask you, did you ever, in those six months, did you ever feel like you wasn't um, capable or like, you wasn't good enough. Did you ever? Did, I mean, insecurities. I, I I I definitely felt like I, I I didn't feel like I wasn't good enough. I felt like I didn't know if this would work. Mm. So it's sometimes like when you working out, you like, all right, I know if I go to the gym for another thirty days, it's gonna work, right? right. With this, you don't know because you're dealing with lawyers. You, I ain't never lost my company before i didn't know anybody else that had sold a company i didn't know nobody else that had dealt with that so it's not like i could just call them be like yo i lost my company how many months i gotta fight for this you know fight for this stuff back like and then they'll tell me oh it's gonna be three months like i didn't know that so i'm thinking okay i'm grinding over here i'm starting the icing agency i'm starting a digital community um called girl mob i'm starting this i'm starting that just to get the revenue that if we ever made it to an argument or we ever made it to court i had the money to even fight them Mm. you get what i'm saying so it was six months but every day i'm talking about i wasn't getting my hair done i thank god i have an amazing husband like that after going through all of that still put a ring on my finger because most dudes ain't solid like most dudes would be like yo this girl went from getting her hair done all the time driving this g-wagon being fly being lit Hopping on vacation to no, babe, for your birthday, I'm going to bring a massage therapist to my office. Mm. Like, it was that bad. You know what I'm saying? So for me, six months later, to buy my company back and then go to China, I didn't even... I didn't even feel like the marketing agency was a thing for real. Like, I felt like once I got my clothing company back, we up, Mm. right? Like, we got all these vendors. They ready for their orders. We are up once I get the lights, once I get my trademark back. I go to China. I strike a deal in China where I own 50% of a factory in China. So I'm literally there like 14 times a year, learning Mandarin, like started with 39 employees, grew to 139 in employees in China. This is crazy. In China, yo, for five years in China, like blood, sweat, and tears trying to build this thing. That thing worked. My marketing agency also worked. And my digital community, which is for female entrepreneurs, also worked. So I feel like... You're not going to really experience light until you go through the darkness. No, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's a lot, man. It's a lot. Jeez, that's the, the grind is real. The grind, it's still real. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now... You got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. So like looking looking back on it, right, I, 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 I started saying this um, a little recently called like hindsight bias, right? Mm. Like you really, it's, it always look easy looking back on something, right? Looking back on something, the story is always different than like going through it. Yeah. Right. Going through it. If somebody else is going through it, what do you tell them? What's the best advice you get them to get through it? If you're going through it right now, the best advice I would tell you is to get people around you that can pour into you. Mm -hmm. Like, relationships are more than money. The biggest currency for Yes, sure. relationships will walk you in the door way before money will. Mm -hmm. My factory in China, I found that from a mentor. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't even know that he was, I didn't even call him my mentor. I was in retail when I was 20 years old, ended up at a trade show. Started designing shoes with Jeffrey Campbell. Now I get to this company where, oh, my God, I need to go to China because I don't want to get middleman again. I call Jeff. I said, hey, I'm going to China. I have no idea where to go. Wait, what? That wasn't the Molly Cyrus thing? No. Damn. No, I was. Yeah, I started my I mean, I was the I started my career on Scream Tour. Like I was a music artist. So. I started very early on as an entrepreneur. Okay. So the China was, that was something separate. I thought yeah. you went to China for. No, I went to China after I lost my company Damn. because I didn't know where to produce anymore. Yeah. I went to China. I started all of that after I lost my company. Yo, so how does it feel to be like this? Because, you know, in this world, we always got so much to say about black women. Yeah. And like, especially strong black women, women that's, that don't really need nobody that's working and shit like that. How does it feel to be one of them, like, I don't know if it's 10%. I'm going to just say a fake number. 10% of the women in the world, that's like this strong black woman that everybody got something to say about. Yeah. Um. So, honestly, it feels good to me because mm -hmm. I was raised by a strong black woman. My mom was a single mother. I didn't see her have... So there are some things that I put into my life to make sure that my daughter experiences. I've never seen my mom love properly. So that's a non-negotiable for me. Mm -hmm. I've never seen my mom ever financially free. So that's a non-negotiable for me. I never see my mom travel. My mom, when she passed, never made it on an airline. Right. So here I am traveling around the world. My daughter's five. She's been on 500 flights. She's been in 15 countries. Mm -hmm. So it's certain things in my life that are like non-negotiables because, yes, I was raised from a strong woman, but I seen what she went through. And there's things that I built up inside of myself to say I'm not ever willing to go through that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to my husband, I need him. Like, I'm never this strong woman in our house. Like, that cape come off when I get to the door. How do you how do you turn that on and off, though? Like, that's got to be hard. It, it, it ain't got to be hard because we don't do business together. Right, but you got you you a boss in so many other aspects of your life, right? Yeah, but let me tell you one thing about my husband. Like, one thing about my husband is Zoe has always been like this super low key, off the inst off the gram. Like the Zoe y'all know now is not the Zoe that I met ten years oh, ago, yeah. right? Off the, say, gram. He on the gram. Popping this shit now. Yeah, he, he popping <laughs> his stuff now, but that's only three years. Like, okay. scroll down, you'll only see three years worth of content. So he was always this low key. You know, I got your back, whatever you need, guy. And he was always good. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't share finances. We don't share bank accounts. Like, we always had our own thing going on, and it was always good. But every time I needed him, he always came through. Mm -hmm. In 10 years, he's never needed me. Never, right? Mm -hmm. He never even asked me for nothing, right? So to me, it's not difficult because... He's not my employee. He's not my business partner. Like, my stuff that happens in my business is over here. And I come home, I'm like, oh, my God, babe, this these employees or this payroll or this building. And he's going to guide me through it. Because also, before we got involved, he had 
10 retail stores. Mm. So the information that he knows, like, I would be dumb not to listen. I would be dumb to be married to someone that I don't trust leading me. Mm. So I think the women... I think so many women nowadays, they get married out of comfort. They get married out of, oh, like, I've been with this man. I ain't trying to start over. Or, oh, this. And I always said, when me and Zoe started dating, I started dating for who I knew I was going to be, not for who I was at that moment. Mm -hmm. So, women, if you, for all the women that are watching, if you know the man sitting next to you at, on the other side of the bed at night, wouldn't look good walking a red carpet with you. Wouldn't look good accepting your star on the Hollywood Walk of Flame. Wouldn't look good if you get a, if you send scale your business for a million dollars or twenty million or whatever it is. That's the time to let them go. What's another year? Because you know your potential on the inside. Like I knew my potential on the inside, so I wasn't willing to date somebody that I wasn't willing to let lead me mm. and lead me through our relationship i feel like that especially in a like younger date and i feel like sometimes that get in the way too though like you might see yourself for who you're going to be but the person that you with still see you for who you are today right mm. and sometimes that can like that can bring a lot of conflict because like you see yourself as so uh i don't know i say how but it can it could come off or it might look different to somebody else Right. So it's all about projection. Like I never I'm never walking around my house like, oh, in a year from now, I'm going to be a billionaire. Like I'm never doing that. Mm -hmm. Right. I think for me, it's all about us both having that understanding on where we plan to be mm -hmm. in five years. Right. Even now, I'm telling my husband like, babe. I know I'm working a lot right now, but give me five years. In five years, I'm selling my company. We're chilling, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to travel the world with our kids. So it has to take a little bit of his imagination to believe that that's true based on what I've already done in my business, right? So sometimes it's, it's the other person's insecurity on where they are mm. in their life that you may outgrow each other. But if we know, I'm going to give you a perfect example, right? When I lost my company, I was on the air bed. Zoe was coming back and forth. We was we was in a long distance relationship. So everybody like, oh, he was on the air bed. No, he lived in South Carolina. I wasn't willing to move to South Carolina. So I was on the air bed above my retail store figuring it out. He was coming back and forth. You know, we he'll come on the weekends. And he said, um, I want to go look at some houses. I'm like, okay. So we all the way in Johns Creek, Alpharetta. We looking at $3 million, $5 million houses. Sir, I can barely make payroll on Saturday. Like, so I would literally fall asleep in a car every single time we went out and about. And I remember one time we were about to pull up at this house. He was like, yo, listen, I'm going to pull over real quick. You got to get up. I was like, well, he's like, why you don't like going in these houses? Like, why you I basically got to drag you in the house to show you the house? You're not inspired. You're not excited. I'm like, no, because I'm just trying to make payroll yeah. next week. Like, yeah. I can't even think. Get me an apartment. Like, let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's figure that out, a condo or something. I can't think about a multi-million dollar house when I'm trying to fight for my company back. He said, listen, that's not something for you to think about. I need you to be in the spirit. I need you to have the mindset of if we were to get this house, you can actually live in it. Because most people don't get the blessings that they truly deserve because they don't even have the mindset to accept it. Thanks. I was like, okay. So what did I do? Obviously, I'm going to be the good girlfriend. I walk in his house. I walk in the next house. I'm like, our house. <laughs> I got the video still on my phone. I'm like, our house. Showing them the house. It's like, you know, a $500,000 house. So I'm like, okay, this our house. Babe, look at our living room. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. Six, four, five, six months later, we walk back to the house. He's like, remember this house? What you thought of this house? I was like, I mean, it was cool. It was great. Like, I love it. They did some changes. He's like, okay, cool. He, I turned the lock. I opened the door. It's flowers there. He bought me the house. Dang. Right? But what if I didn't have that mindset to he wouldn't have wanted to buy me it like or us it wasn't even a me thing because he was moving from south carolina to atlanta it was a us thing but he wouldn't have wanted to buy me that and i feel like that's a lot of times how we move in our everyday life like yeah we say oh i want a million dollars oh i want to sell my company or oh, i want to do this or, i want this i want that but you're not even mentally accepting of it like okay cool god drop a million dollars in front of you what you gonna do with it mm -hmm. you gonna help somebody else or are you gonna go to louis vuitton and blow it up you know what i'm saying so i think that for me and my relationship and everybody that's listening you need to evaluate like the relationship you in because every relationship 
it says ship at the end, meaning it's supposed to move you somewhere. Mm. Ain't no relationship supposed to keep you standing still. Mm. So if you in a love relationship, if you in a co-working relationship, if you in a partnership, y'all are supposed to be moving in that ship. Mm. That's a fact. <laughs> no, nah, that's a fact. I just, yo, it's so dope because especially like I see your gram, like all you post, I don't say all you post, but a lot of that shit be like relationship shit. I'm like, damn, like I was going to ask you like, damn, I wasn't. How important is that to showing that to the world, though? Because, like, you post it all the time. Both of y'all, like, post yeah. each other all the time. I think it's super important. Like, I think for, again, me and Zoe, we both grew up with single moms. Like, Zoe lost his um, lost his father at a very young age. So he wasn't, after eight, he didn't have his father. So for me, I want other brown women to see what love looks like. And me and Zoe, love is, like, true on and off the gram. Like, mm-hmm. it ain't no, oh, on Instagram, we gonna, sk- we gonna make this a skit. No, anybody that knows us, anybody that's around us, y'all will see genuine love. And how we were able to do that, not saying that it wasn't tough. We're two entrepreneurs building very big businesses in two different ways, right? The one thing that helped our relationship is every single month we have an evaluation date. Mm. Ladies, I know that it's very difficult, but Zoe actually introduced this to me. Like, we need to have an evaluation date every single month. And we go on this date and we ask ourselves one question. Mm-hmm. How can I be a better wife? And he says, how can I be a better husband? And we literally listen to each other and we grow from that. Like, there may be times where he's like, yo, like, you come home every night at 8 o'clock. I need you home at 5. I'm like, okay, that's going to be challenging. We talk about it. But within that next 30 days before the next date, I try to fix those things. Mm. A lot of times we're not communicating in our relationships. So that same anger that you had in January leads to February, leads to March, leads. Now it's a new argument that's piled on top of that. And then here we go, divorce. And we feel like now we're unequally yoked and we can't even have a, a normal conversation because you got so much built up baggage, built up anger. We let it go after we talk. And I say, okay, this is what I'm looking for. Then he say, this is what he looking for. We talk and we build up into the next 30 days we work on that one thing or whatever those things are and then we bring back the next day oh those are gone nah, i feel like man i feel you but it's not easy that easy right so okay I, like 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 earlier you said you got your you got your feelings hurt by like somebody that was close to you right mm-hmm. but you said instead of hardening your heart you had to continue to be a good person because that's how you get your blessings <clears throat> i think in relationships it's a similar way mm. right you get your feelings hurt and you start to do things the opposite of how you want to do it. And what I mean by that is, for example, um, let's say uh, just being able to speak your mind and communicate. Okay. Right? You you talk to your partner, and let's say they don't respond in the way that you want them to respond, or they don't respond in a way that fits you, or that's your love language, right? Mm-hmm. So now you might feel like, man, I can't say nothing, because every time I say something, I get rejected, so I'm, I'm going to stop saying it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that happens a lot of times as well. I'm pretty sure y'all had to go through something like that. Oh, sir. That's what I said. It took us a while to get to where we are now. Even like, again, I've never drank before. So obviously I drank before. Right. I've never smoked. I've never done certain things. So my tolerance level is very low. Mm. So for me, I feel like there are certain deal breakers in our relationship that if I don't, if I can't talk to you, if I can't communicate in this way, if you don't understand my love language and we're not going to work. And for me, when we sat down on our first date and we agreed that we would be together, we said this was a forever thing. So when you are on a forever thing, if it's a forever thing and you know that you're on a team, you don't shoot the ball other ways, mm. right? We we shooting the same, we trying to hit the same target. So if if we continue to try to hit the same target, we need to align on the way that we love each other, communicate with each other. So I feel like how you said, like, okay, I try to say, say something to my girl and she didn't take it a certain way. So then I stopped talking to her. Why? Mm. Why didn't you ever sit down with her and say, hey, what's your girl name? Shade. Hey, Shade, listen. I tried to speak to you the other day and you kind of, you know, you was like, all right, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it really bothered me. How would you feel if I went and found another girl to speak intimately to? She'd be like, oh, what? you, you want to. Yeah, because I feel like if we're going to be in this relationship, we have to be able to communicate with each other. Mm-hmm. And that's an important thing for me is communication. So we don't have to do all the time. I'm not going to talk your head off every night. But when it's important to me, I need for you to understand that. I'm not going to do that because I don't know how to. 
I never was taught that, right? I, I had a single mom growing up too. So like I don't even know what that looked like. All I know is you ain't listening to me. So now I'm upset. And I don't even know how to express myself to let you know that I'm upset. Mm. So I feel like that's that's an issue within our culture mm -hmm. is that we don't have enough self-development. Mm -hmm. Like we're not figuring out ourselves within and to be the leaders. I remember, um, and I'm, I'm swaying the conversation, but I remember when I first got into entrepreneurship and I'm like, oh my God, all these people are leaving. All these people are leaving. I'm doing everything. I'm paying bills. I'm buying them cars. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But what I didn't realize is like, I was a toxic leader. Mm. Like I, I'm at the office at nine o'clock. You got to be here too. Like, mm. I, oh, I ain't eat lunch. Why you eating lunch? What do you mean? Like, ma'am, I'm about to die in your well, office. About, no, 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 so, no, so when not. it comes to relationships, right. right? When it, when it comes to relationships, you have to figure out and develop that. You have to be self developed enough to know the areas in which you need to work. But let's on. go back there, right? You never drink. You never smoke. Mm -mm. He drank, though. Yeah. So just in that same example, right, was it times was like, bro, like, I'm not drinking. Why are you drinking? Like, I'm trying to get to it. Like, I want to know how you was able to there, get through there that, were time. There were times. Yeah, I'm not all the good stuff. No, no I, get, for sure. Get through that. There were times that, okay, if he was drinking, for example, right? If he it's was easy drinking. easy to judge him because you don't drink. Yeah, and I'm I'm such. If you drink and you stumble one little step, you're <laughs> drunk to me. Like my team hates drinking around me. You could like spill a, a glass a little bit. Oh, you're drunk. Oh, you're drunk. You need to go home. Like I'm super dramatic when it comes to alcohol because I've just never been that person. So there's times when, say, if my husband was drinking, right? Mm -hmm. This is so early on in our relationship. I would wait. Why would I argue with him then? It's gonna only blow up, and he's and he's drinking, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not gonna be anything good that comes from it. So what I would do is I would wait, wait until things calm down, and I'm going to tell him, like, hey, I don't like how this situation was handled, and this is in order for us to get to our final goal, which we said we're going to be. Also, can I speak? I was also married before. Okay, I was... I I swear on everything. <laughs> I'm like, this sounds like some experience. Like, yeah, this yeah, like, yeah, this yeah, like yeah, some yeah, shit yeah. That, like, this I was is, also married was before. Grown, grown. Like, this sounds like I was this. also married before. Okay, and right. I and I feel like after that marriage, I was like, I'm never getting married again. And I had to really take a deep dive into myself mm. and figure out what did I do wrong? What did okay. I say wrong? And so for me, I'm so big on wanting to make sure this works. And he is too, mm -hmm. that we don't, we don't spend so much time getting into the small fights. Yeah, because yeah. we know that it's going to take us off of our journey, yeah. right? So I think, again, when it comes back to your girl, you got to figure out what are the things that you need mm. and be able to articulate that. When I was started working, Zoe would be like, yo, like, relationship time? Like, what's up? Mm. I'm like, I mean, okay, we in. Like, I, hold on, I got this paper. I got to do this. I got to do that. So it's like, no, if you know that we're on a journey together, you got to stop whatever. You know, it's funny. Uh, um, but I'm glad you said that because at first it sounds like, all right, okay, just sounds perfect. But like you said, you had to go through something. Mm -hmm. And the fortunate part about me and my, my relationship, my fiance, is that I'm glad that we was able to get through that early stage. Because, mm -hmm. like, I ain't never had, like... That was the experience. I was 26. We was 26 when we got when I, when I when I got where I was 26. So like all the mistakes we made together, right? But I'm fortunate that we had to, we made those mistakes and then we coming out. It's like it's like a whole new relationship now. Yeah. It's like I, I like the stories you guys. I like, got the same stories, but even the the old stories we shared those old stories as well, right? Mm -hmm. Those toxic stories and things like that. And it's yeah. like I'm so for, I feel like we're so fortunate that we was able to come through that because now it's like a whole different relationship. But now the I feel like way different. Yeah, but now I feel like it starts now though. Yeah. Like now that you know, okay, we made it through this really crazy toxic time. Oh mm -hmm. my God, we was about to kill each other. I, I almost didn't stay with you, whatever, whatever. Now that you know that you made it through that, what's next, right? Yeah, right. Like next has to come with us a, a extreme amount of peace, extreme amount of clarity. For me, I cannot work in my business and be chaotic. My my day to day be crazy like if you seen how i even got here today it was crazy working with clients calls all this stuff and i can't do that and then go home to toxic Facts. like i can't go to home yeah. to toxic if my work life is already crazy i gotta go home to my husband like yo like you good peaceful and then when there is times that we have our issues we bring them to the table and we lay them out mm -hmm. right one thing that i felt like black men especially need to discover is how to be emotionally available. Mm. Like, 
I think so many black men go through a situation where they're just, nah, they told me not to cry. Oh, I lost my brother. I seen somebody get shot in front of me. Or, oh, I went through this. I went through that. Like, I can't be emotionally available. And that's the main thing that women are. This is why relationships nowadays are not working because men can't be emotionally available. Mm -hmm. Like, for me, I remember when I lost my mother. And obviously, my husband handles, he handles things much different than I do. Like, I feel like he don't care. Like, he just be like, okay, cool. Like, he doesn't, the the stuff that hurts him, I would never know. Or yeah. anyone would never no, know. Like, I'm yeah, honest. he's just like, he's like, God got a different plan for us. And I'm like, like, okay. So it like, was. Like, can we cry first? And yes. Then tell me, like, like, not God. God is looking happy for a reason. I'm trying yes, to tell you it's okay. Yes, <laughs> He's like, your mom is in a better place. Just act like you can call her. I'm like. So for, for a moment of time, like there was a time when I felt like, well, if I can't talk to you, OK, well, I don't talk to anyone about it. You know what I'm saying? Because he's just not that person. And I don't think that it's just him. I think that there's other black men that are listening to this podcast and that are like, yeah, I'm not emotionally available. And my girl started breaking down crying right now. I wouldn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And it's like. We had to develop that in our relationship. Like by me going through stuff and handling it the way that I handled it, we had to develop that. He had to develop that emotional availability to say like, okay, wow, let me get her some flowers. Oh, let me give her a hug. Or, hey, I don't really know what to say, but let me just ask her. And these are things that I was like, babe, if I'm going through something, just say, how can I help you? Because you may not have the answers, right? Mm -hmm. But just saying to your wife or your girl, Babe, I don't know what to say right now, but how can I help you through this? She would then articulate how you can help, man, just buy me some food or, oh, my God, I just need to get through this or whatever. She'll be able to articulate that, and then a relationship would be more sustained. But the worst feeling is to feel like, dang, my man isn't emotionally available, but somebody else is, mm. right? Because there will be guys that will take advantage of someone else's, someone else's, like they will be emotionally available at work or they will be emotionally available at the their career or whatever. An investor will be, oh, what's going on? Wow. Call me if you need anything. Now that you whole, it, yeah, it's right. a whole spiral effect. Like for me, I, I completely block that out because again, my, my blinders are on when it comes to the target, but we also had to, we had to navigate that, you know? Mm -hmm. But for me, I also had to understand where my husband came from. I also had to understand what, how he was built and kind of not expect him to be emotionally available for every little thing. And I'm going to come to him when I really need that emotional availability. <laughs> mm, no, in fact, I think what, what helped me just, or us, is definitely just worrying about ourselves more, mm. right? Because I feel like, you know, it, it's so easy to fall into pointing a finger. Yeah. It's so easy, right? And, like, I'm the same way, you know what I'm saying? But as time went on, I was able to understand that this is what my woman wants, and I want to make her happy at any in, at, at all costs, even if that's not who I am, right? Yeah. I'm going to learn how to grow into that. But even with it, – it's, it's just so much more complicated even with the – um. You said, like, you know, just ask me how. Because it, it's come a time where, like, my, my woman is, is human, so I'm pretty sure it's been times where she felt like – Damn, like I want somebody who just get it right. Not I. You don't want nobody to just ask, say, hey, "How can I help you?" Because I could do that. Okay, babe, how can I be there for you today? Right. I'm pretty sure there's been times where she just wants somebody who know how to be there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think that I think that we can't we can't assume that the other person would know how to handle our wounds. Not for sure. Like our wounds come with so much trauma. Come with so much. Any look like. Everything comes with so much built up trauma. You wouldn't really know how to put a. You don't know if I need stitches or a band aid or some alcohol, whatever. You don't know what I actually need. So I think that it's okay for you to ask me for for me for you to say, babe, how can I help you? Mm. And for me to be able to articulate that. Now, if this problem arises again, right? If I lose one family member and then I lose another family member I'm not going to ask you how can you, you shouldn't ask me how can you help me the same way that you helped me with the last time mm. you understand what I'm saying obviously you guys will start to become more you, you, you'll start to know like oh I know my girl needs this mm -hmm. my husband know like he know when I need my love language is gifts so he know like my birthday don't do nothing for me the rest of the year but on my birthday show 
out, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and that's his too. His love language is gifts. He don't care if I say, oh, you look good or oh, man, you so strong. He don't care about that. Like, I ain't never got to say nothing about how amazing he is, but his love language is gifts. So coming home to this or a little whatever, um, it, it just does something to him. And knowing that about us is mm-hmm. how we move naturally, you know? No, that's dope. I, uh, and I, I, I like how y'all like show the black love on the gram. You know what I'm saying? I um, I know some. For me, sometimes it be intimidating because like you know, like people are human, mm-hmm. and it's like you have people like I don't know, uh, Derek Jackson, right? And like I look at that situation like, damn, like he really was out here like talking some bullshit Crazy. and got caught being like a hypocrite. But honestly, if you want to be real, like a lot of humans are like that. Not not saying that like they're hypocrites, but they. Are like that in the fact that, that we're just human. So mm-hmm. we make mistakes. What happened is when you're the person that point fingers and be judgmental, it's hard to get grace yes. in the world. Because like, who, how dare you be the pot to call the kettle black? Right? Yes. How dare you to be that person? So like, I feel like that's a sense of like, I don't know, sometimes I can see, uh, I don't know, myself, I, I guess, uh, have some insecurities there because like man i don't want the world to see that i'm i don't want the world to think i'm just an amazing person because i'm, I'm a human i'm flawed you yeah know what I'm like, i make mistakes we all make mistakes so like i i think that's important too do you do you find sometimes where you gotta i don't know since you show the world so much good that's going on that you got to talk about yeah where y'all so come i from? feel like i feel like absolutely i think that my instagram i'm using it as a platform to motivate women that were me 15 years ago, mm. right? That was that single girl that didn't think a ideal relationship, that didn't think I could get a guy that actually loved me on and off the gram, that didn't think that I could get a guy that only focused on me. I mean, like, we, I'm not, I'm not going to say that this is forever. You know what I'm saying? Knock on wood. But in 10 years, me and don't know where we want to go. So we're not looking at anything else, right? Mm. Like, we just have committed and made that commitment to God for real. Like, if I cheat on my wife, I'm cheating on God. Mm. If I cheat on my husband, I'm cheating on God. So I don't even, I don't even look, honestly. Like, I don't even look. And you can, I mean, algorithm tells a lot. My husband's Instagram, like, you could tell a lot by what they're studying. You go to my husband's Instagram, it's all short-term rental (laughs) properties or whatever. So I think when it comes to that perfection side, we are all humans. We are figuring out every single day. That's why I try to use my Instagram to motivate people because the person that I was, just scroll down, the person that I was when I started my business is not the person that I am today. The person I was when I first got with Zoe is not the person Mm. that I am today. We've evolved. So instead of just being braggy, braggy, oh, my husband bought me a Maybach. Oh, my husband, da, da, da. I try to tell them, like, y'all, we stuck it out. This man stuck with me for six months on an airbed when I couldn't get my hair done, when I couldn't get my nails done. So, yes, I'm going to do him a conference. Mm. Yes, I'm a book Grant Cardone. Yes, he's going to buy me a Maybach because we've stuck it out through the hard, rough times that y'all also have seen if you scroll back we was looking scraggly we wasn't we didn't have it together i remember when we used to go with our friends and we used to pull up in our tesla everybody else in the rolls royce everybody else and when i first got my bentley i'm like oh my god like i got my first luxury car i've showed all of that through the internet Mm. so it's just now what goes viral that y'all see but every if you scroll 10 years back it's all on the gram. And that's what I really was asking. Like, do you feel that pressure to show them, like, yo, we was really struggling? Because I guess now when I look at the gram, like, if I just a short scroll, it just look like niggas is flexing. Like, no. you know, like niggas is outside. We get money. You niggas is broke. We, oh, we. no. <laughs> and, and another thing about me is I feel like I can lose it at any time. Mm-hmm. So, like, a, a certain part of my being doesn't feel like this is real. Mm. And I kind of like that because even, like, I could walk in my garage and I could be like any, 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 like I have, we have a lot of cars, right? Mm -hmm. But I still hop in my Tesla every day. Not saying that the Tesla bad car or whatever, but I'm just saying, there you go again. I'm not saying it, but I'm saying (laughs) out of all the, out of all the cars that I could choose to drive, I'm, I want to choose which I feel like driving. Right. And like, again, it's just that sense of not, being there yet because I know that it's more for me to attain and also (laughs) a couple of years ago I was on the airbed above my retail store so knowing that I can lose it all like if I don't live life the right way I can lose it all so don't get so cool and accustomed to all this materialistic stuff that you lose your soul or you lose your identity nah like I could care less about that when you use the car example say like a 
a, a Hyundai or something like because a Tesla like it's people are like I'm, I'm trying to get a Tesla now that's like <laughs> that's the car that I want so you gotta say like a, a Hyundai but or I'm like saying a, say I'm, like something that's really really no bad. I gotta be realistic a Tesla is like so we, we no, love a Tesla I, right no now. but also also when you're looking at other people blessings right you're not willing to take on their lessons mm. either so you could say oh skittles yeah i want a tesla but you weren't willing to sleep on the airbed for six months mm. to grow your company again you could say oh i want a maybach but you're not willing for two years straight not to pay yourself and to pay every single person around you mm. right for you're not willing to go through the struggles that i went through to get the things that i have so don't say oh you should have a honda because if i had a honda you wouldn't believe that i did everything that I did with the business that I currently have if I pulled up in a Honda right now y'all be like oh she don't own no she don't got no multi-million dollars because that's just the way that our culture people is set up sure. people have to see and I want to feel it when I get in my Maybach I want to feel like wow all those tears in my Honda Tucson led to this mm. Right. I want to feel packing up my car, leaving Cleveland, Ohio and packing up my car in my Honda Tucson with the, the um, driver, the rear view, the passenger back door not working, packing that car up and moving to Atlanta. Here I am 10 years later and look what I've done. So it's not about me flaunting my materialistic things it's about one me living a life that i'm actually proud of mm. and allowing other women to see it through my work mm. not through my through my gifts not y'all don't even see half the stuff mm. like i always tell people scroll back me and zoe been together 10 years our first trip was dubai dubai wasn't even popular then right we just were saving up figuring it out making sure that we did things for each other so don't ever compare somebody's first day for their to their hundredth fact, day right mm. don't ever compare your bank account to somebody else's bank account you know what i'm saying and don't ever though. compare my lifestyle to your budget mm, that's hard i like that <laughs> <laughs> i like that that's no a, but i mean for, for instagram it's easy though it's so easy you know what i'm saying like people yeah. look at your ground they be like i want that you don't want the work to the, you don't want the work to come with this, yeah. though. You don't want the tears. Like, niggas always want something. Like, you want something. You just, niggas just want something. And I always I always look at it because, like, for me, even even recently, like, I look at Instagram and I'm like, all these girls, like, all these people posting these Shopify notifications and screenshots of what their company doing, and they online all day. How are y'all doing this? Now? What is the strategy? Because I'm working. Like, I have mm -hmm. a real staff. I have real payroll. I have real bills. I have real commitments that I have to be a part of. So I, sometimes I feel like when you look at other people's grass, you're looking at the fertilizer. You're looking mm -hmm. at it's it's fake. It's not real, right? Your grass is the only thing that's real because you know what you're putting in it. Right. So you know how hard you had to pull the weeds out. You had to sow the soil. You had to dig a little deeper. You know your grass is beautiful because you went through some things mm. you looking at that person grass over there and you don't even know it's fake Facts. you don't even know she's sleeping with the lawn man you fact. don't even know that that her brother is scammer and then just put the grass together and made it look good for you to come on over here and ruin what you already have mm. so just stay focused on looking at your own grass that's a fact damn that's crazy <laughs> yo you was um so like what is the main i can't, I can't even ask you this because you came here like it's the only thing you do you came in here judging me, man. I didn't. I'm I just said it's cool. I'm you. most people that have podcasts, they also have other things. You judge me. It's cool. But you said you did radio. I did radio before this. I, I got fired from radio to do this. Okay, so you did radio. Yeah, I did it. I said, what did you do before this? Nothing, just a podcast. Oh, I you, you did not do just a podcast. Okay, so you just came down, sat down with a mic and was like, I'm a podcast host. Something like that. No, you did radio. Yeah, I did radio. But uh now nah, I was I'm joking. Yo, so like what's the main thing though for you? My marketing agency. The marketing agency. Yeah. You was a manager at one point. So yeah. Sure. Mm. How was that? It was good. It's good. I think man you still being, doing it? I manage people's brands. Okay. I don't manage talent. I think management is the most thankless job you will ever get into. What do you mean? It's just you you always see the star. You don't see the person shining the light mm. you know i seen a quote where you said something about you always have to like you you stop or well not you stop you wasn't really doing interviews because you was always having to be the person that to talk for the person yeah like that, yeah right? <clears throat> so so oftentimes it's hard for you to develop your own identity and self without being like oh the manager want to be in all like the diddy you know mm -hmm, yeah. like nobody 
everybody laughed at Diddy when it comes to, oh, being a manager because he's also a talent. Mm. So a lot of times in my industry as owning a marketing agency, it's like, oh, do you want to be a marketer or you want to be the talent? Mm. Well, my story and what I've built allows me to be both. But I have no interest on being a star or being a celebrity or being famous. Like, I honestly just care about impact more than income. Mm. So I've just, I know that my story can change lives. And so that's That's why I could be the talent. That's a great point. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah. Because, like, I'm looking and when you said it, I was like, oh, interesting. I want to talk to you about this because I got this, like, love-hate relationship with managers, PR, Mm. like all of that. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. Because you get you get conversations, right? And the PR and the manager always say we're not to talk about. And most of the times we're not to talk about be the shit that really can get people to understand you. Yeah. And I was wondering talking, I was like, I'm used just to talk to you about it. Okay. Why why do why try to hide the artist's flaws or what they're going through instead of like really embrace it and really talking about the things that might go viral, the things you might have got canceled for? Why not talk about that being transparent through it? Because I feel like when you be transparent to it, through it, people can see that you're a real person. For sure. And you can through it. Yeah, so I've never been that manager, right? Mm-hmm. I've never been the manager to be like, oh, hide this or hide that. I actually want to accentuate everything that that is is you because mm-hmm. that's what your audience is going to organically tap into so i want to i want to put you in a platform if you crawl the time show that if you're going through this show that like every talent that i manage i took them on a journey mm. and people should see your journey going up mm. they shouldn't see your journey going down and they shouldn't see your journey going straight that's right yeah. i mean of course there's going to be downs but people should see like okay she started here she went here she went here but when you say love hate relationship with managers and PRs, I think that you need a manager and you need a PR when you get to a certain point because they're speaking your name in rooms that you would never walk in. No, they're calling like they're man, bro. Management. No, you got to understand not- where I'm coming from. I'm saying like, I got love because of the people I'm talking to. Yeah, it's of always course. the manager and the PR saying, don't, don't say that. that. It's like, shut the fuck up. But, yeah. <laughs> like, that's, just, that's just me. But yeah. I understand how important it is. Yeah. So like, I was just curious, like, were you able to give me some type of perspective that I might not have had? Of course, yeah. I mean, like, again, what, when I say management is a thankless job, I think that there's outside of the one deal that you close Mm. there are hundreds of thousands of calls that went into that one deal Mm. that the artist now looks like the star because of right Mm. but there was so there was a manager in the background calling saying no get hung up on no get hung up on telling their daughter one second hold on i'm on the phone give me give me a minute i'm on the phone my client my client right i know my daughter gonna grow up and be like oh my mom i'm gonna say my client one more time Mm. like there's so much, there's so many sleepless, sleepless nights, there's so much anxiety that comes with tr- having someone trust you with their career. And mm. you you only get paid a, a small nickel out of a big pie, no matter if you were in charge of creating the pie, mm. right? So what if, imagine you spending five months of your life, right? Time away from your fiance. Time away from now, your how podcast. Long was it really? Oh, how years. long was it really? Oh, years. Five okay. years. Okay. Five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Starting with nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> An Instagram page, right? Yo, okay. Yeah. So go ahead. Go ahead. So I'm just saying, and and this is this is not just why are we like this again. I managed <laughs> so I managed I managed so many different clients nah, get into your go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. but at the end of the day because we're on the same page go ahead do your thing. at the end of the day you're building the whole pie right you're crafting the pie you're saying okay this is what you should do you should do hair you should do makeup you should do this you should do all these things you're building the pie now you've built the pie now you're finding chefs now to put to create the pie now mm. you're finding ingredients to put in the pie and all the person at the end of the tunnel has to do is say this is my pie Mm. right so oftentimes management you go through so much behind the scenes for you not to get a thank you or for Mm. you not to say for no one to say oh wow I appreciate you getting me to this point I got it from now or I appreciate you um and all that you've done for me the time that you spent away from your family the time that you committed to me when I had nothing the time that you committed to me when I didn't have money the time the the two years that you committed 
for free and involved your whole team and paid your whole team the leases that you took out for me like I'm just saying that there is a lot especially when you care for somebody and you want to see that person win genuinely there are going to be ups and downs I'm not perfect right no one is perfect no relationship is perfect but if you genuinely no, brought a person from here to there and opened doors for them that other people would close, I would just continue to thank them no matter what the relationship, what what happened in that relationship. So, and this is not just for me, it's for every manager, it's for every PR, everybody that is in the industry behind the scenes that you're shining the light on somebody that ultimately without your light wouldn't even be lit. Mm. So, it's a thankless I job. Wanna, I, so I do want to get a little like transparent i guess right okay you you wait but you're in court right now or no i'm not in no? court no oh so you can talk about whatever now yeah i can talk about okay, whatever cool. I'm, just, I'm probably not gonna how, talk about whatever see, I, but I, I was pretty nice with this i'm pretty nice though okay. i ask questions and shit yeah and no sure. i'm not in court no no so so outside of before we even get to the how oh, we had to talk about the business i'm really my i'm really curious to know like dealing with like a big uh a big talent mm -hmm. right and like you said like you put so much time in it, mm -hmm. but on the back end, you can't really, I don't say you can't, it's hard to speak on it because it, it would seem like you're a hater. Because a lot of times the, the person of that's course. most successful or looks the most successful always going to outshine the other people around. Yeah, right? of course. So of their course. word seems law. Yes. Like, does that ever get frustrating to like, to even talk about it, to even want to speak your piece? Because a lot of times, like, your truth is your truth. Yeah, I, I, I feel like, again, going back to that same thing is like, I went through that to get to where I am now, mm -hmm. right? Like, without going through being a manager and being super dedicated and being, you know, going through everything that I went through in that situation, I wouldn't have had that same focus, that same uh, ingenuity, that same hustle for my own business. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like some things that That's that hindsight bias, though. No, hold up. No. But, but some things that, that, no. that you go through, it's like it nah, doesn't nah, even nah, need nah, to be nah, said nah, for real. Nah, 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 that's that hindsight bias. It's easy to say that. Okay. Because you came through it. Yeah. But that's some feelings. That's some dark times. Of course. I'm talking about those times. Yeah. Not, not coming through it and it's like, yo, man, I had to go through this. God just blessed me. We get that. No, I'm, I'm them, not saying that either. Some real hard times where it was like, man, nah, like, you had to you probably shed some tears. Of course. I shed a lot of tears in all of the relationships that I've went through, right? Mm -hmm. um, it just depends on how committed I was to that particular client, how much business I lost, how much days I spent working on a project. If you behind the scenes and you commit a month of your life, you're going to be upset when it, you know, happens or disappears or whatever it happens, right? Um, so for me, yeah, absolutely. There's emotions that you go through, but what you going to do? You're going to sit on it? Mm -hmm. And like, what's the point at the end of the day? At the end of the day, the people that know me, the people that see my work, know what I did and mm -hmm. the commitment that I made to the project when I was on it. And y'all see, like, it's, it's, it's just, you can use Google, you can use the internet to see like, okay, when Skittles is involved, this is moving. When Skittles is involved, this is happening. So push back a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's people that know you. Yeah, people that don't know you, we can't say they can just Google because, like, hype. Because you won't know. You won't know. Conversation. What's the, if I was to Google you, right? And I don't. Yeah. I don't know your business, right? I would. Could, I, I could possibly be like, nah, I want to be. A, I don't want to be a part of that because she gonna fuck what I got going up, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? If I don't know you, yeah, and that could fuck up future business. But see, that's the part. This is the part of being a manager that people don't talk about. I could have put this deal in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. You could then go ask your friend that has never done a deal before, what should I do to promote this or what should I do? Your friend give you some messed up advice. You show up on the internet doing the wrong thing and now I'm blamed because mm -hmm. I'm the manager, right? Mm -hmm. I cannot manage everything my client says. I cannot manage everything my client does. That person is still a human at the end of the day. So if they involve somebody else in a business deal, it's going to happen. Like, mm. I can't. But now I take the blame because, oh, I'm the manager. Mm. No, I'm just the only one vocally fighting for you. No, I'm just the only one that's publicly attached to your business dealings. So, I mean, again, it just goes back to why I feel like management is a thankless job, because 
when things are going good, managers don't get the praise. But when they go bad, they oh, it's the manager that. fault. Oh, you need a bad, you need a new publicist. No, you went on that stage and said what you wanted to say. Mm-hmm. I told you exactly what to say. I crafted the message for hours, and you went on the stage and said something totally different. So now, who fault is it? Is it the talent fault, or is it te- is it the team fault? All right, cool. I'm gonna come out. I never, I never play from it, right? Because I'm all about progression. Mm-hmm. Do you think that, like, given everything that happened, that you could, like, come out, shake hands, and, like, hug it out? A hundred percent. Yeah. I don't... So, okay, I think that one thing you're talking about is one particular scenario, and it didn't happen like that. Like, we were... After that whole scenario, we was chilling, like, in Dubai, like, in Maldives, hanging out. So, it didn't... Ha- the way... Wait, what you talking about now? I just feel like you're talking about a certain situation. I'm talking about B. Simone. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So... What were you talking about? Yeah, I'm talking about... Okay, cool, mm-hmm. cool. So I'm asking, could y'all hug it out? That's what I'm of saying. Of course. That's my girl. Okay. I'm so proud of her. I love everything that she's doing. I think that she's on an amazing journey, an amazing path. Um, and I feel like a lot of things that she is doing and has done was guided that it took us working together for her to get to a certain place in her career where she can do confidently what she's doing now. Mm-hmm. But I think that she's doing amazing. And I think... I, at the end of the day, I just feel like there are certain ways to handle relationships or quote unquote fallouts, but there there was no fallout in our situation. But with any manager, yes, I, I salute her. I love what she's doing and I wish her, you know, the best. And it, yes, if you're speaking on that, yes, of course, I will hug her any day. Okay. But you know, it's, it's funny, but like even speaking of that, it's, it's another perspective in this, like just taking the fall for things, right? That could do that could get you in better room. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's, a, it's an example with um, Steve Harvey, right? It was years ago. Everybody thought that like he messed up the um, the, the 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 pageant yeah. name, right? And it didn't come out until I don't know if he I don't I don't think he came right out with it. Mm-hmm. It took him a while to come out and said, "Yo, basically, what happened was they they messed up behind the scenes." Yeah, and I thought it was dope that he never really mentioned the fuck up. He took the the heat for it. Yeah. So like if you see things like that, that could potentially get you in bigger rooms, right? Or, mm. or, or 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 bigger clients because they see that, oh, this is somebody that I, that will really ride for me. Let me let me work with them. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that it's at the end of the day, everybody make mistakes. Some mistakes are just more public, mm. right? Like there is a girl right now with a three hundred dollar business and she messing up everybody's orders. Right. Mm. Nobody knows because no one really knows her. But her customers are affected by that. Mm. But when you are scaling and when you get a larger audience, you now have to be more ca- careful about the things that you put out and how you put them out. Because now you have more eyes and more haters mm. and more people that want to see you ideally fail. Right. So um, I-, I think that one taking accountability in the role that you played, especially me as a manager in that. It's just so many factors that I think everybody can't just blame the manager. Everybody just can't blame the team. You got to say, oh, these this item went through this hand to this hand to this hand to this hand to this hand. How quickly did the product come out? Mm-hmm. How uh, what was the client's you know interaction in regards to the product? So it can't just be, oh, it's the manager fault all the time. Everybody in the, the process has to take accountability for that. And then everybody business. Ultimately, if something goes wrong, it's going to get hurt Mm. in that situation as well. So for me, I this is why I'm not um, I think that situation kind of made me move different with clients, um, because, again, once you build up a client or you work with a client for so long, people take their highlight reel and their downfalls as your fault, Mm. which you don't know what I went through behind the scenes to navigate this situation or to even. Um, open up doors for half the clients but again like it's it's like if you have a if you have a hairstylist and you see this hairstylist with this person all the time and then that client choose to go out of town and use a different hairstylist and go on a red carpet who they gonna tag who yeah. who they gonna tear they apart gonna tag, they're gonna yeah. te- tear apart the most the most popular hairstyles that's always seen with them mm-hmm. but they're not saying oh hey superstar why you went and used this other person out of town now you tearing down that person's business because they're just the person behind the scenes mm. you get what i'm saying and that's kind of like that's funny like we were talking about like people they want the success but they don't want to they don't want what come with it yeah it's crazy because like even now i was talking to i talked to a lot of like 
high profile people when we talk about just not the hardships of having to make mistakes in front of the world. Oh yeah, right? like for when sure. You, when you dealing with people of like a huge magnitude, now your mistakes is going to be under a microscope, right? But yeah. when shit, I might be dealing with somebody <laughs> that got fifty thousand followers, and I might I can make them, I can I can afford to make a mistake, yeah, right? And I feel like that's that's a part of the the success that a lot of people don't see. And I think another thing is that most talent don't even know that they have the influence that they that you guys believe that they have. Mm. So I work with clients all day that have millions of followers millions of followers and no money and millions of followers and they have money and they don't even really believe that their one post could do mm. make the damage or cause the heartbreak or cause the turmoil in people's lives that they think they like oh i was just saying i was just saying this i was just expressing myself i didn't know that it was going to lead to all of this but then it becomes a manager that has to piece the puzzle back together that has to call and say please don't cancel this deal with my client she made a mistake or this person made a mistake please I still go through with this factory please still go through you get what i'm saying the client not over there making them calls but the client freely spoke out against or whatever they felt, and then it went against them, and then it's like the team that's behind them is there doing the repair work. Mm, no, nah, that's crazy, bro. It's a lot. You gonna need a manager soon. Oh no, nah, I'm, I'm yeah for sure. I'm with that. I'm okay. for management. Yeah, you sure. gonna need a manager. Yeah, I'm trying to get management. Yeah. I had management. You know, it's just it was my like homies. No. <laughs> what? I, I feel like I that's not gonna work. That's not true. Why? Uh, LeBron James. That's different. How? See now you don't believe me. That is See, totally crazy. different. First of all, I we I take everything personal. That is totally How? different. What? Okay, what doors did your homeboys open up for you that you felt like? Yeah, just LeBron James homies ain't really open up no doors for him. He opened up doors for them. Coming out of high school, they we we not gonna talk about that. We not gonna talk about I that. I got it wrong. Yes. So what happened? Why we can't talk about it? I mean, I'm saying they had things moving. In, in I'm from Cleveland, right. right? So they had stuff moving. Like Rich and them had a record label. He had, he had, he was doing stuff. It wasn't just like, oh, let me just pick any of one of my homies. Oh, yeah, sure. Like he had business sense. He knew how to operate. He knew how to run finance. He knew how to handle contracts. Right? He had things going more than your average. Oh homeboy, yeah, it wasn't just right? my homeboys. They okay, even, okay, the way you managed, said it was just no, like no, it wasn't know. like just the my homeboy from the hood. Like yo, yeah, come. that's what you said. Like that's uh, that's the emotion at it. To me, if you you need a manager that can that is one going to fight harder for you than you will fight for yourself. Mm. Secondly, you need a manager that is going to open up doors for you that you wouldn't be able to open yourself. Meaning they may not have the relationships or connections right now, but they will go into every room to get that connection because they know that it's going to benefit your career. So basically you say you still don't manage me? No, I don't do management. No, I don't do management. You can't like have like an assistant that you just... No, you I have in. a marketing agency. <laughs> no, we just scale brands. That's it. That's crazy. How can somebody get, get their brand scaled? Connecting with you. Yeah, definitely. So you can go to the com. tell them Jay Hill sent you, and I'm going to make sure you're good. But no, yeah, so we work with all clients, you know, from a la carte, meaning I have no budget, to premium, meaning I got a little bit of money, all the way to elite, meaning I have a, a very large budget to grow and scale my brand. And we work with clients all across the board. You can go to my page. You can see what I do. Yeah, you're not really. I'm not really good at like, it's cool. I'm going to help you out. It's okay, cool. good. Because you ain't going to escape through this like that, right? <laughs> Every time I get like a big entrepreneur up here, I always pick that brain. Okay. Because we need some free game. Okay, cool. And that round too. Let's so go. Look. All right, so look. If I ain't have the money to hire nobody, right? Yep. Or I wanted to do it myself. Yes. What's three pieces of game that you could give anybody, right, that they, they probably would have to pay for it? Yes. So the first thing I would say is branding comes first. Mm -hmm. Right. If you don't have a good brand, no one is going to buy it. How do I brand myself? OK. So, for example, let me find something. Dang, you ain't got nothing around here. That's not J -Hill podcast. What you mean? No, I'm saying like I'm trying to give you an example. OK. Example. This is my liquor company. Right. Mm -hmm. I just started it mm -hmm. and I don't really got a lot of money. So I, this is my product. Just imagine it's a little bit of liquor in there. OK. Jay, here you my homeboy taste this drink right mm -hmm. you like it okay can you share it with five of your other friends this is all the packaging i got this is the pa this is what i got this is the branding that i got this is the website that i got you most likely would not share it because you would be 
embarrassed about how your friend branded their company, right? But what if I came to you with this packaging? I was like, yo, I invested a little bit in myself. I got some labels done. I went on Canva. I took a Canva course, right? Canva's free. I went on YouTube, studied like six hours, and took a Canva course, and I developed professional what can labels. I study on Huh? What can I study on YouTube? Canva. How to use Canva. Okay. How to design on Canva. How to use Fiverr. Sorry. Is there any um, particular words? We need real games. Cam. Just Google how to design on Canva. Okay. And you will how figure to it out. How to design a flyer. How to design a, a, a liquor bottle. Labels. Cool. All right, packaging. Oh, cool. Whatever you have. Right. Okay. So now I got proper packaging, a proper logo, mm -hmm. and now I'm gonna say, Hey, Jay, this is. My alcohol company, this is my liquor company. Can you share it with a couple of your influencers? What would you say if it looked like this? Mm, cool. You would say? I don't know. I don't know what I would say. If it's my homie, I'm going to just share. Honestly, if it's, I'm the wrong person to ask. If it's my homie, I'm going to share that or that. Me. Mm. I am. Because I'm a real friend. Okay. I'm going to send you something terrible to share tonight. And we're going to see if you share it. No, 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 because my auntie make food and her her okay, food tastes auntie, good. Do your auntie under the bus no, like I'm that. saying her food tastes good, but her pictures don't look the best. Mm. So I'm going to send it to you because you said I'm bringing a plate up here and then I'm going to tell you to share it with your audience because our Instagram is not where it needs to be. Okay. But I, I just want to see that your audience is going to trust you to share my auntie food despite how it looks. People buy with their eyes. So, no, you're not going to be like, yeah, 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 I support your company. I'm going to share it with no packaging, with no branding, mm. right? So, even if you can craft up your logo, craft up your packaging, craft up your labeling, and then you get it to somebody, they're going to believe in it whether you have followers or not. So, the first thing is having good branding, mm -hmm. right? Whether you have to design it yourself, start where you at, cool. The second thing is now you got to market it. Now you got to create that fun content it could be informational it could be inspirational it could be transformational it could be motivational or it can be engaging out of the five what's the what's the what's the top one all of them matter all of them matter and i could do it in every way right so with this bottle okay informational hey guys if you want to get drunk in two minutes or less <laughs> this is the alcohol for you this is the two lit girls and, right like that's informational, telling them about information about how we're going to get this product sold. Inspirational is, y'all, listen, why why this got to be here? I need something else. But inspirational, I, this is hard because obviously I never drank, but... Okay, inspirational could be, you know, I was going through a really hard time in my life and I was reverting to all these different alcohol companies and, you know, I found out that it really brought clarity and I became an entrepreneur because you know of that time of my life and so i started this this company right so it could be inspirational inspiring them to do something then it could be um transformational how was your life before and how was your life after this is a very bad example but how was your life before something and how was your life after weight loss right mm -hmm. you lost working out your pop podcast everything could be transformational but before you started in here you was probably in the living room with a mic you was, was that's though. transformational right no, for so, real. I was. motivational is giving <laughs> exactly <laughs> no so that's cap. transformation <laughs> seeing people like yo he he inspired me because i seen his transformation the next thing could be motivational giving them a motivational message around your product and then engaging is whatever is a trending reel on instagram grab a ring like start dancing do the little dances create something that's engaging show all your friends different friends on how they drink liquor i'm gonna get my one friend to stumbling in i'm gonna get my one friend to try to act not drunk right i'm gonna get my one friend so at the end of the day as long as you have really good branding and then you have marketing is going to get to your consumer. By the time you have really good marketing, you're going to be making money to invest in a marketing agency or in a um, consulting firm or in someone that can actually take you to the next level. Because, yeah, you got to where you are with this first label, but now you need to go up. Right. Mm -hmm. So now we need to rebrand you. So, yeah. OK, Brandon is first. Let's Brandon is first. Marketing is last. Mm. OK. Yeah. Okay. And then you work with my agency. Nah, but I don't got it right now. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm You got to, it. No, no, I'm trying to figure out how we going how how can I get your average person 
I can't get in touch with you. Yes. Like that, 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 but, that. but all of my clients, like if you go to the icingagency.com, you will see that we work with people for less than $300. Like you can get your labels, you can get your product labels, you can get your social media templates, you can get a social media rebrand. So I'm not out here like, oh, I'm I'm all high and mighty. I only work with A-list clients. Well, why would I pay you $300 and go on Canva and do that shit myself? I mean, it, it might look like Canva too. Mm. It might also not sell. Because you think it looks good, but your audience thinks it looks bad. Mm. And there's so many competitors that actually pay to get it done right that they're bypassing you in the marketplace. Mm. So a lot of times people don't invest in themselves and they say, oh, you don't believe in me. No, you didn't believe in yourself because you didn't invest in yourself and it shows. Mm. So how do you want your customer to invest in your product when you didn't invest in your product? Mm. But I don't got it to invest. You know what I'm saying? $300 is so, a lot. So when I tell people that that don't have it to invest you also don't have it to go out every weekend you also don't have it to buy ubers when you could have asked your cousin to carpool with you you also don't have it to buy alcohol you also don't have it to shop in the louis vuitton store whether you're buying it authentic or non-authentic you also don't have it so the best investment you're going to make is in yourself it's not in my company you can hire any marketing agency you can hire any brand and firm to do it but you got to hire somebody to do it because you are not skilled at doing that. Mm. It's going to be things that you're really, really great at. And someone else can have a vision for your line or for yourself or for your business and and blow it up. Mm. But you could actually stay stuck where you are making what you make with your company looking like how it looked because you didn't invest in yourself. That's a fact. Do you think being successful is like a mindset? Because like that's you saying like everything you're saying. For me, it's like, it makes sense. Like, I get it. Mm. But it's like some people who really just don't get it, though. I mean, I think that, I think success is a mindset. But I also think that if you, if we change our mindset mm. to believe in ourselves and our brands or our businesses, the, the people that are interested in going that way, because I also don't believe everybody is meant to be an entrepreneur as well. So I think for those people that are interested in going that way, if you invest in yourself and you invest in your brand more than you invest in other brands, then it's going to pay off. Mm. But most people don't have the mindset to do that. They're quicker to walk into Louis Vuitton and buy someone else's grandfather's name than to invest in their own grandfather's name. No, thanks. Yo, so wait, hold up. Branding comes first, marketing comes last. Yes. Nice. How do you, and this is a real question, this is a genuine question for me. How do you not get stuck in branding? Because, like, everything you said was branding, right? Like, and I, and I agree, agree with it, but sometimes do you see people get, like, like stuck in branding? What I mean by that is, like, my, let's give a real example, right? I did everything I could possibly do to make sure my podcast look good. Everything you said about the liquor bottle, I literally did that with my podcast, yep. right? I'm like, man, in order to get good people on here, I got to make them look good, right? In order to make them look good, I got to get these type of cameras I want to share it so they can want to share it. So if they look good, they saying something good, they're going to want to share it. Branding, right? But then it's kind of sometimes you get lost in that. Like, all right, okay, they look good. Now I want them to look even better. Or like when, when do you stop and be like, so all right, the first, marketing? Yeah, the first thing I think is like you brand first no matter what um, – no matter what it looks like, like you brand, like, okay, I need my logo. I need to fir first develop my color palette. Mm. Is my branding blue? Is my branding yellow? For example, y'all don't think like multi-million dollar brands, you're never going to walk into a yellow Target or you're not going to walk into a pink McDonald's right. because they are branding. They know that this arch, right, is going to always be yellow. It's going to always be red and yellow. So no matter if our customers are young or old, they're going to see that and know that it's us. And sometimes it right. takes you time to even know that that's your brand. Because sometimes, I don't know, sometimes you, you're just not there yet, right? But I, I don't think you, no, I think you should start there. Mm. I think you should start there because that's what other people are going to take you serious. You got to start with that one brand. It ain't got to be the best logo, right? Like, mm. my first logo was terrible. I think I paid like $150 for it. And then I grew to hire an illustrator to actually design me a logo, like handwritten font, so that I know that, like Nike, sold their logo. I don't know. The employee was working for them, made, what, $150 or something like that. And then she went and sued them for their logo. But because they owned the rights to it, she only won, like, what, $15,000 or something like that. But how much money has that checkmark made? Right. So if you know from the beginning what your branding is going to look like, you can evolve it. Mm. It's going to evolve. Like, look at every 
million dollar billion dollar company they have evolved but they started with something at least so don't get stuck into the branding until it monetize so mm -hmm. start with the branding make sure it looks good ask a couple of friends that you trust not your friends that's gonna be like yes it looks good because they haven't seen you do anything mm -hmm. so they're gonna tell you anything to get you to do something right so Start with your friends that have it, that have a little bit going on and that are going to tell you the real. Like, girl, no, I'm not going to buy that, right? Look at your competitor and say, okay, if I'm walking in these streets and I have makeup and I'm saying I want to be as good as MAC, I want to be as good as, as Kylie Cosmetics, you got to look at their branding and see what they're doing. Even if you're not on that level, you can make a ring light. You can get a, a slab of marble from Home Depot, put it on your floor, make it look. You ain't got to take pictures on the carpet, mm. right? So that's branding. It's how quality you it looks branding is knowing that you can get the same dress at a flea market and the same dress at sex right branding is your mindset saying i'm not paying them a thousand dollars it's in there mm. right whereas when sex is say oh it's a thousand dollars oh yeah give that to me give me you know some champagne that's branding branding is the articulation in someone's mindset of how much someone is willing to spend how much time someone is willing to spend by just looking at your brand but how do you know when is enough though so like for example you may when you when you i think you know i think you know when it's enough when your audience starts to be attracted to your product and then you start marketing you're going to get it in front of more people you're going to start making money and then at one point in time you're going to be like you know what dang i've been i've been using this brand for a little bit let me let me do a rebrand mm. Okay. And I think you, when you finally get the audience that you've always desired, is when you kind of go from branding to marketing. That's still, that's still hard. I don't know. Really? Because like, that's like you getting the, the the amount of money that you desire. That's 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 hard to to gain. No, from. that's that's not that's not diff that's not um, difficult, right? Like for example. When you started your podcast, mm -hmm. you said, I got to brand it in this way mm -hmm. to attract this type of person, mm -hmm. right? So when you attracted that person, you knew that your branding was working. If you if your branding wouldn't have worked because they wouldn't have been here. You're and right. you still would be doing solo cast. But just like, no facts, but just like branding, let's say I was comparing it to money, right? I wanted a thousand dollars. When I get a thousand dollars, like shit, if I could just put this up or put it into this, I can get ten thousand. But as soon as you get ten, it's never enough. So just like you said, like it's like Yeah, I'm but that's marketing at that point. Once you get that first thousand dollars, it should now go to building awareness about your brand. Mm. The branding is already good. Now we just need to get the awareness out there. Mm. I need to go and DM as many when I know I look at my podcast page, I'm like, it's solid. Like mm. It looks good. It looks quality. It don't look like they come and film in my closet. So I know that they're going to rock with me. Once I get them in there, now I just got to get more people to rock with me. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. No, nah, facts. I get it. No, that's a lot of game, man. I'm fucking with you, man. I like I like what you got going on for yeah, sure. I, I sent you, uh, you be doing um, like conferences, like women. Yeah, um, I do a lot of conferences and, for women. It's like women empowerment. Yeah, I, I don't say empowerment because I feel like a lot of women go to women empowerment conferences and leave with no power. Mm. So I don't want to call it a women empowerment conference because I'm not empowering them. I'm teaching them. Mm. I'm bringing them experts that will teach them how to do it because you can leave and be motivated. Right. A lot of people go to church and they're like, oh, like I'm motivated from this sermon and get out walk out the door and do the exact same thing. Right. So when you come to my conference, I'm going to give you strategy information that will, when you walk out the door, you can immediately implement. So I don't just say women empowerment. You feel like that was like a fad at one point, like the whole woman empowerment movement is like, yeah. Cause it's like women empowerment. Sometimes a lot of the women empowerment people, it can be a marketing strategy and they can really be mean girls. Mm. So yeah. how, how you, how you teaching, a bunch of women and trying to empower them when you mean for real, mm. when you really don't connect with women for real behind the scenes. Like my record speaks for itself, you know, like there are so many women that have worked with me or that have came into my platform and their lives have been changed from just the information, free information. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think when it comes to women empowerment, it's, it should be something that you're doing from your heart. Everything that I do for women is because I remember that I didn't have nobody when I first started. Mm. Every information, my community, Girl Mob, is forty nine ninety nine. You can get in there. You can get over 90 classes. You can get four live classes. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
So to me, it's not about making money. It's about really, are you change? Are you impacting people? Or are you just living from the income from people? So it's not about making money. It's with that particular yeah, I'm platform. Say, cause, I mean, oh, what, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what my conference? Yeah. I don't know. In September, I think. Give 10 away right now. Then if you okay. About making money. Oh, for sure. DM girl mob. 10 people come to Elevate Conference on me. No problem. Anybody friend. that has ever followed girl mob, anybody that has ever followed me, y'all know I give from my heart. Like. You said I, it. And I'm you, not. When yeah, 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 for sure. In August or September. I'm not having made the day yet. Said it. But for sure. I'm I, clip I, this up. What they going to do? What they got to do? DM girl mob. DM girl mob. I could care less. Like, <laughs> no, for real. Yeah. Like, let me tell you. Let me tell you just a little bit about me. One thing about me is like, I feel like when I got to a certain point, place in my life and I ended up on that airbed I made a promise to God I said God if you get me back on top I promise I will tell everybody about you and what you did for me right mm. so for me it ain't it's money gonna come money come to me so much I, I be turning money away my my staff be losing their minds when a client could sit across from me and be like I have a, a budget for fifty thousand dollars and I'd be like oh no I'm okay because I'm not my heart doesn't move with your product or your integrity and i'm going to be thinking about it at night i'm going to have my whole team working on this for months you know what i'm saying so i gotta really love what you do i gotta really believe in what you do it ain't about the money for me money can bring a lot of headaches you accept any money you can have a whole lot of headaches you can have a whole lot of a lot of depression a lot of anxiety that could come with money so i feel like if i lead in the way that god wants me to leave the money gonna come mm -hmm. and the money has came i've never Marketed I, 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 as a marketer, I've never ran ads for my marketing company. Mm. It the the clients just show up from All the work that, that I've done. Talking, man, you never ran your own ad. Mm -mm. See, man, was, you you don't gotta run you don't gotta run ads when you really 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 good and your referrals speak for you. Okay. Yeah, and uh, another thing is like when you want to make a certain money amount of money, you can just get. You can solve richer people problems. Mm. So you once you develop your skill, I started my marketing agency with people paying me like a thousand dollars a month, five thousand dollars a month, right? I built that skill. I built those relationships. I built my team of the best creatives in the world, I would say. And then we were able to take on larger clients. So to me, it's not about all of the clients that I can bring in. It's about let me work with eight clients and blow them up no, every no. month. I fuck with it. I love what you got going on, man. I, um, It's funny because, like, you see the profile and it's like, you know, you probably see things that come with people probably thinking, like, I don't know, um, even with the woman empowerment. Like, people have been saying that for since COVID. Yeah. Not probably not about you, but, like, you see people like. Oh, all the time. I yeah. never get offended. I could care. Oh, so it. you get it, too. Oh, I mean, I see people tagging, like, oh, the women empowerment is a scam. Da -da -da -da. That shit don't fuck with you? At all. At all. When you know what you're doing on this earth, I mean, college is a scam, and I also got a doctorate. So you got a point. <laughs> you 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 take it for what you. People say college is a scam, and there's also people winning from their degree. You get what I'm saying? So you take it for what it is you want to take it for, with. The only people that's gonna feel like it's a scam is the people that are scamming. Mm. I feel like it's I've, honestly like just being in this space because I've been doing like a few entrepreneurs that's on like high levels, and I feel like I probably came across scammer once every single time with every single one of them. I'm talking about like the biggest one. What are and they you, not scamming. Okay, all right, all right. And they not scamming? Yeah. Like they really, like for example, Nehemiah Davis, one of the biggest, he's he's one of the biggest entrepreneurs. He, I, I mean, real testimonies. Yeah. Like niggas know he's really getting to it. And I'm pretty sure you'll see a, probably one scammer comment somewhere. But like, I think, okay, so this is what I, what drives don't me. don't know no better. This is what drives me insane about the word scam. Mm. I think scam could mean one unhappy customer that's true i think scam could mean one unhappy customer that didn't show up mm. didn't do what they were supposed to do with the information didn't use the information to do because like you go to college right i went to college a lot and at the end of the day i could be like dang I, I ain't really do nothing with my merchandising degree. I ain't really do nothing with my business. Like, I ain't really do nothing with these degrees, right? 
is it a scam or did I not do anything with the information that I paid for? Right now, I do believe that there are people out here that are scammers mm. and that are intentionally creating products and creating awareness to get money from people with the, Ill intent. With ill intent. So I think that that's the difference. I think when people say, oh, I've been scanned, I've been scanned, I really want to know the the depth of it. Like, mm. okay, did they show up? Did they do what they, did they finish their scope of work? Because I mean, for me, owning a marketing agency, I can say that there are clients that be like, oh, I invested in this. You didn't show up to the shoot. You didn't do none of the posting. You didn't do anything that we prepare. I have a whole drive. And like, I'm a receipt girl. Okay. Mm. I keep, every single receipt but at the end of the day did you really do what you said that you that you hired me for right and then secondly i feel like sometimes people hire a company for other people results and that's not that's not real like you can't say oh i'm gonna go to college because my homeboy he finished college in two years and he got, he's killing it in his world it's not like that but when you come to a marketing agency or when you come to a pr company you like oh i see what you did for this person do it for me no you have different skills you're different you're in a different place in your life you have a whole different business model the the relationships that i've crafted for this person can't be crafted for you like Bro, it's like, different nah, nah, nah you yo it's you hitting it on the money especially espe <laughs> like i ain't gonna lie like before i came to atlanta i couldn't fathom none of this i didn't even understand it right so like i'm just being straight up with you and i wasn't like i was hood probably 15 20 years ago like right so even before i came to atlanta i wasn't a hood and i was educated but i still couldn't understand the 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 verb is that people like Neo was saying or like like all these big entrepreneurs that I'm yeah. seeing, I couldn't understand it. So I probably wouldn't even be able to like, I'm like, I ain't fucking with that. Yeah. Until you really sit down with them or you sit down with people who work with you like, oh nah, this really oh when they say get in the room is is real. Like yeah. that matters. And a lot of times it's it's, it's I feel like it's it's is less people who really been successful in, this, in those rooms than it than it is than it are the people who are actually in those rooms. So for it sure. is hard. To, it's, it's hard it to is. find. It's hard it to is. See. And I, and I think that I think that for me, we as entrepreneurs, and which is why I have Girl Mob, right? We as entrepreneurs have to give so much to build that trust mm. for our audience to understand. Like I could start with her here. I could start with her at forty nine ninety nine, and if I get all of this information and I grow my business. Then I could work with her agency or then I could do this or then I could do that. But people just want to jump off the ladder and start with the start right here and say, oh, I want those results that you did for this person. It's like, wait, I work with that person for seven years. I work with that person for five years. I work with that person for a year to mm. get them to this point that you see them publicly. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like there was a lot of non-public moments mm. non-public doubt non-public you know what i'm saying losses that we took behind the scenes before you made before they became a public icon so i think you know it's it's both of us both the entrepreneur and the person doing the work and mm. then secondly it's like one thing that bothers me really really bad is when our culture dictates something by how much it costs mm. right like if you have a budget, right, you know you can't, you want a car. You know what your budget is. You know your budget is 10000 2000 50000 You know. But at the end of the day, your budget is going to dictate which car you get. You're going to get a, a used Honda from Craigslist. You're going to get a Honda off the lot. You're going to get a Lexus. You're going to get a, a Maybach, right? You know what your budget is going to get you. I feel like when people invest in their business, they don't want to invest because they don't know what their business is going to get them. They don't trust that, oh, if I invest in my business, it can actually grow. It can actually scale if I put it in front of the right people. So then when when a, a, a lot of people may look at my company and they're like, wait, somebody paid her $100,000 a month. Yeah, they paid me $100,000 a month because I know what I'm doing. And they were able to do that for a year because I was able to get them results. So imagine if I, mm. they paid me $100K a month, what results did I bring them back for them to keep me on board, right? But people say, oh, I was scammed because of this and this and that. But what are you doing? That's what I was going to say because even like I was talking to Neil and, and he was like, like, cause, like he got different like – um. I don't know, mentor shit, yeah, right? Yeah. And I asked him about that, like, so, like, what if somebody saved up $75,000 to pay you and shit? And he was basically saying, like, 
you got to be able to like back that, right? You you can't just come and pay me this mo- amount of money and you're not able to put in the work yes! that come behind it because with that is going to be some instructions. You got to do this. And if you can't do that, if you can't do that, then you ain't, you probably shouldn't have never even spent that from the jump. Yeah. So like, but I think, crazy. I think we as, and, and Neo is my guy. Like I love everything that Neo is doing. Um, Neo has changed so many people's lives. Let's just get that out here clear. No, right. But I think we as entrepreneurs have to also be careful with whose money we take, right? Um, in the beginning, when I started my agency, I truly believe that I can help anyone mm. because I have the strategies, I have the network, I have the relationships. I believe that I can help anyone, but are they willing to be helped, right? If I get you in a room, you're like, oh, I just want to be in this room. If you get me in this room, I'm gonna I'm a do everything. I could literally get you in a room, sit you next to the person you always wanted to meet, and you don't say five words. Bro. And I could, I've could i literally <laughs> sat with clients and said, okay, when you get in this room, I'm gonna introduce you to this person. I'm gonna connect you this way. And then when they walk out the room, yeah, I don't think they was interested in me. You didn't say nothing. You didn't even <laughs> introduce yourself. You didn't have no Yo. elevator pitch. So so now, who's, who's fault is it that I, you paid me to introduce you and do this and do your PR and put you and you did nothing with it. Yo, and that's so I'm very careful when I talk about the clients that I work with. Mm. I only work with eight clients a month for my own sanity and I turn clients away every single day because it's not just going to be that $10,000 investment. It may be th- 60 days from now you may need to invest again. If you want to do an influencer campaign, these influencers ain't cheap. Mm. These ads are not cheap. Right? Like to post on shade room is like 15 grand clients come to me and say okay i want to build out my website i want to do this i want a uh, influencer i want to be on the shade room i want to be on baller alert and i want a movie premiere my budget five thousand dollars i'm like Bro. there's no way <laughs> hey, that <doesn't> make sense. <laughs> it's no way it's not that i'm it's not that i'm not looking out for my people it just I will show you every invoice. I will show you what the shade room costs. I will show you what the influencer costs. I'm very transparent with my clients. But at the end of the day, the person that is paying the money has to be okay with the results that they get from the work that they do not do. Nah, and I, I, and I say that I name drop because, like, bro, it's like I was one of them non-believers and, like, just sitting in the rooms, like, it's so important. It's funny how many of y'all... Tom probably said that saying this year. Yeah. Like, get in the room. Yeah. Like, just being around these people, I just, it opened my eyes of, like, this is real. Like, yep. you just got to be there, bro. Just be just be willing to put in the work, man. Yeah. It's like, man, it's... But that's... I say that because, like, I'm pretty sure you probably got it a lot. And, like, I'm just... I'm going to be one of you. I'm going to be your biggest, like, I don't know... Advocate. Fucking, a- advocate for yeah, sure. See, like, see I never... For me, personally, I haven't got that a lot because I know the work that I've done. Um, but not you. I say, like, people in that... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, people not, in that space. Yeah, because, yeah, like, for sure. even, like, Neo probably never got it, but I'm just saying, like, just people in general in that, like, entrepreneur space, yeah. you see it going around, and it's like... But you know, the crazy thing about it is, right? The crazy thing about it is I made $16 million in my company. If I held back that information, if I'm like, nah, I don't help people. I'm good. Like, I'm chilling. I'm on a beach somewhere. My The culture would be like, see... People like her don't want to put people on. Y'all don't want to give us the information. Y'all don't like to help nobody. Once you get to the top, you don't want to help nobody. You don't want to see them be successful. No, but when I give you the information and you don't do nothing with the information, now it's a scam. Which one do y'all want us to do? Do you want us to give y'all the information and tell you how we got here? Or do you want us to chill and be Oprah and Beyonce somewhere not showing y'all how to do it? And then y'all... Be careful. Uh, no, I'm saying I love. No, I love. I'm gonna beat them. that out. No, no, no. I love Beyonce and I love Oprah. But what I'm saying is they're not teaching courses. Nah, they nice. don't. They're not giving you the play on. This is how I do a tour. And then and honestly, they don't have to. But it's crazy because even 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 in the net, right? Even if let's say you did it all for free, nobody would take it seriously. Like you, like bro. It's so much. I learned so much over this. I'm Yo, not even like like you get Jay, a game. For let free. me tell you, when I when I was on my airbed, I started teaching classes in my retail store for free. Guess how many people showed up? Five. I started charging twenty five dollars. Guess how many people showed up? Twenty five. Mm. I, I was doing it for free. People don't value it. They don't. When, value when you don't pay, pay, you don't pay attention. Facts. When, right. How many ebooks? How many classes? How many free digital information? TikTok, YouTube, all of this stuff is out here for free, and y'all say, "Oh, I'm not, I'm not doing Google University." But when you go to pay for somebody class and you do nothing with it, like, man, we can talk about this all day no, because it really, it really, it really just drives me crazy. Because sometimes I even 
I've even questioned, like, am I giving too much away mm. for nothing? You know, like, am I giving all this game away? Am I giving all these resources away? Am I telling you, anybody that take my class, I'll tell you exactly where I found it, how to find it, where the vendor is, what the vendor name is, what the number is. Like, I don't gatekeep at all. Mm. If you get on a live in a conference with me, I put my hand, like, left hand, right hand up, whatever hand up. I don't gatekeep. I'm going to tell you exactly what got me to where I am, how I did it, who's the connect, all of that. Because I know that even if I gave you the ingredients and my recipe, your sauce is going to be different. Mm. Nah, bro, this is fire. I I had to get into the little the entrepreneurship business bag because, like, I, like I said, I'm, I'm going to be one of the biggest advocates because, like, it's different. But like, I know you're tired different. of everybody saying, oh, everybody take the mics away from the podcasters. No, you, do you see that all the time? I see it all the time. I'm not tired of that. You don't like it? I mean, are, you don't care? I really don't care. Oh, okay. Like, I, just, I mean, shit, yeah, take the mics away from all these niggas. <laughs> shit, it helped me. You <laughs> feel me? Because my shit ain't going nowhere. I paid for this shit. Not. But no, yeah, take the mics away. You be talking some bullshit. Mm, for yeah. sure. But no, nah, man, Um, I guess, bro, this is great. I don't even know how we wrap up. Uh, Tell them how to contact you, how yeah. to follow you, how to get everything that you got going on, man. Yeah, definitely. So I always... I definitely want to start by saying, figure out, if you want to work with somebody, figure out who they really are, mm. more than what you see online. Everybody has a certain persona online or everyone, you may look at somebody's Instagram feed and think that they're a certain way, when in reality, they are totally different, right? So if you want to work with somebody, don't judge what you've seen or the perception that the media has crafted. Really get to know them for yourself before you invest in them or get them your money. That's the first thing. The second thing is, you guys can find me on Instagram, Miss Skittles, M Z S K I T T L E Z, and my company is Girl Mob. I own the largest co working space for aspiring women in Atlanta. It's called the Bakery Co Work. Um, all of y'all get free day passes on me. Just mention Jay Hill, um, pull up at the bakery, and then um, the Icing Agency is my marketing company. So, and we, what we say, we give it 10 people, yeah, uh, 10 free. people elevate conference tickets for free. What they got to do? They just got a DM Girl Mob. That's G U R L M O B B. All right. You see, I'm getting y'all the bag. I'm trying to get everything. I'm getting it from y'all. Yeah, and this you got it. I don't get to know you from this. I don't know how to. Yeah, I mean, y'all learned everything. Y'all learned <laughs> about like, my relationship. Y'all learned everything. Everything. No, <laughs> man. I appreciate you for even being willing to talk about everything. Of course, uh, of nah, course. Yeah. I'm still growing. You know what I'm saying? We are put on this earth to still grow. So every single day I make mistakes, publicly, non-publicly, but I'm still going to grow through them. It's hot, man. It's hot. Appreciate you, gang. Yeah. Miss Skittles, J-Hill, J-Hill Podcast is right. We out. <laughs>